Coming up, the Agent 001 V2 prototype is here. I get my first bird knife and then smooth on washers. We don't need no stinking bearings. I'm Bob DeMarco. And this is the Knife Junkie Podcast. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome back to the show. Uh, one of my favorite comments from this past week was from Agent Orange Peel, uh, uh, old friend of the channel. He says, Haha, you got me with that Gerber paraframe. This was on my list of 10 great urban survival knives. You got me with that Gerber paraframe. That was my coworker's ultimate knife. I got him a rat too, and finally he changed his mind. Uh, he's saying this because I'm always bad mouthing the Gerber frame, or at least as long as I've been uh, doing this. Um, but in this case, uh, for urban survival, for something you can ditch, uh, but that's still pretty sturdy and and is serrated and don't cut in a pinch. Gerber paraframe is pretty good, uh, and it was shocking. Number eight. Thank you, Agent Orange Peel. And next from Stuart Trollings, uh, six hundred two. Funny that you have a seal pup in your bag. I've had one for thirty years and it's still sharp. Great shape too. And those darn moras. Many have uh, uh, have many and never enough. Thanks for the show glad you got your stitch uh, but i really like that uh seal pup uh comment because um it's a long running knife and it's part of the mac v sog uh history um, but it really it's like the most practical and probably the most used of all the mac v sog uh knives so really cool to see uh thanks Stuart trolling and thank you for everyone who watched uh listened commented uh, liked and shared with your friends uh greatly appreciated well that's it let us get to a pocket check. In my front right pocket was the Microtech SOCOM Elite, my 2013 model. This is my first ever Microtech, first ever S35VN, first ever bearings knife. And it goes with me when I'm in the car for longer than an hour. That's basically the rule. Uh, this is my road trip knife, even if the road trip is a brief one. And I uh, had one this past weekend uh, for a volleyball, volleyball tournament. And so this was in the pocket and it stayed in the pocket for a few days. You know, I've been on my Microtech kick. And uh, so to revisit this old friend after um, carrying the Bravo so much and then and then the uh, the amphibian and the stitch all new and my auto uh, SOCOM new traded, you know, for that one. Um, it's great to have this old one in pocket. So this is the one I had on me today. Uh, it's funny when I carry this, it's it's so tactical. <laughs> it's so. Uh, hardcore you've seen all the testing videos and yet i always end up cutting food with it it's kind of funny because you don't think of a tanto as a food knife uh but actually it's great for cutting waffles you'll find diner waffles because uh that front uh <laughs> that front edge lands on the plate at the perfect angle uh, i like to cut between the cups so that you have little individual bites with its own little cup of syrup so yeah, hardcore usage. Hopefully, if all goes according to plan, that is as hardcore as it gets for me. Um, all right, next up in my front left pocket, usually, uh, but depending on my phone situation, uh, today was the GEC number 15, uh, the boy's knife. And this, and it's probably in its most classic form, um, and that is as a boy's knife, which is just that drop point blade, uh, single blade in that handle. Uh, but I am so in love with GEC's Autumn Jig Bone. I'm not exactly sure if that's what they call it. They have a number of different um, Jig Bone dies that look like this, and they always have Autumn in the name. I just think they're beautiful. Autumn is my favorite season, uh, at least until winter comes, and um, I just love the colors. And you know, they're, they're the colors I prefer to wear, uh, you know, that sort of earth tone, though I'm I'm in cool colors right now. But I just love those tones, you know, the tones of nature. And so um, of all the materials on slip joint knives, uh, dyed bone is my favorite. And of all the dyed bones, it's that autumn jigging, uh, that autumn jig bone. So the autumn colors like the reds, the yellows, the oranges. Um, 
So love that knife and all of its kind. I've been carrying so many modern slip joints lately. It's been nice to dip back into my pretty, pretty dang nice uh, GEC collection. All right. My fixed blade today in appendix carry was the Pinkerton, uh, Dirk Pinkerton custom fire ant. Here it is in its great sheath. This is a piece of tire or inner tube, bike inner tube. And I have it there because I only have, I didn't want to drill a new hole in the sheath. And to fit this uh, clip, I needed, uh, you know, another hole there. So I didn't want to put that in. So I tightened this bottom one. I don't like the them too tight anyway, because they clamp down on the sheath, make it harder to, to draw. Uh, as you can see, the, um, the clip here, goes over onto the the contour of the blade that uh, pinches the sheath even even more there so i like to keep it somewhat loose uh and then so this uh piece of inner tube over the clip keeps it in place uh but keeps it flexible and uh also that rubbery feel keeps it from shifting around in my waistband all right so let's look at the knife a beautiful triple-edged sheep's foot i guess you would call that uh, I, I've been calling it a Warncliffe, but a Warncliffe, I'm told, is a continuous curve from from the thumb ramp, basically, to the tip. I'm trying to get this to focus. The camera just loves that so calm in the background. There we go. Um, this one with that blue and black rich light, which I find so uh, beautiful. Triple edge in that it's got a main edge here. It's got a top edge here, and it's got a front edge there. Reverse Tonto, let's call it. Oof. hate saying that. Uh, great jimping. Great thumb ramp here, a D2 blade steel. This is just an awesome defensive EDC. It would be a very good uh, box opener if you needed it. Uh, if you wanted a knife to do double duty and you really uh, wanted to lean into the defensive part of it, this would be great, uh, you know, because of that. All of those cutting edges, uh, the discrete size, but you get a full finger, a full four finger grip on it. A great uh, pommel for the thumb to um, grip over. And so I have it set up to, to pull in reverse draw, but you can easily uh, turn it around and uh, turn your hand around and draw it in uh, saber grip. Anyway, love that knife. Find it, uh, uh, find it really rewarding to have uh, custom knives from people that I like, like Dirk Pinkerton, for instance. I love his designs and he's a great guy. And um, you'll find that custom fixed blade knives are not, near are not nearly as are not nearly as expensive is that a double negative they don't cost as much as folding custom knives so you can support your favorite custom makers by buying their fixed blade knives because they're within reach and who knows uh maybe if you have the urge someday you save up and get the uh folders i don't have too many custom folders they they just uh they don't do it for me as much i gotta say um as carrying something like this all right lastly on the list uh <laughs> speaking of Custom fixed blades by cool people. Uh, this is the auxiliary manufacturing pocket buoy. Carrying this one today uh, in the waistband um, on the other side. So uh, basically like nine o'clock for left hand draw. And then the string here, I have the, <laughs> I have this. It, this this works really easily. You know, this debt cord uh, sort of thing where, where this is tied to your belt or your belt loop. And then you draw it and it, and uh, you draw the knife far enough and, and it comes out of the sheath and then the sheath falls and dangles at your waist as you go to town with your knife. Um, it works really easily on this knife. It's because it's a pretty small, uh, yet for me, full four finger grip knife um, and it tucks away real nicely. Um, this one is Nitro V and here, let me, let me show it up close. It is a really beautiful knife. Uh, orange and green G10 has a, a sort of camping feel to me. And then uh, micarta pins are very handsome in there. And then that recurve is devilish and it's got a very stout blade and point. So uh, for me, of course, I always think of it as a defensive knife, um, but would make just an excellent all arounder. If you're carrying one knife, uh, I would say that would be an excellent uh, one knife option. Uh, for a fixed blade. Uh, so this is what I have in my pocket today. The Microtech SOCOM Elite, the GEC number 15 boys knife, the Fire Ant, custom by Dirk Pinkerton, and the Auxiliary Manufacturing Pocket Bowie. All really astoundingly awesome knives. And uh, 
two of them from people that have been on this show. So uh, it's always a joy to carry something uh, from someone that I've had a conversation with um, and whose knives I like. Okay. Uh, the April Gentleman Junkie giveaway is coming up on Thursday, Thursday Night Knives, April 18th. And that is so far off from the recording of this. I haven't quite decided hmm, what we will be giving away. But uh, you better bet in the interim, we will have a, a random knife giveaway or two um, at Thursday Night Knives. I just love doing that. And plus, we have some very generous uh, viewers of the of the show, like, like this old sword, who sends me a lot of cool stuff. All right, let me uh, show off this. I got uh, this from Tim Kell. This past week, and this is the version two or the final version, basically, of the prototype of the knife we are doing together. This is uh, my design blade uh, and uh, well, this was my design and he tweaked it. So uh, it's a true collaboration and it's awesome. So this is a resin 3D print. Um, it feels different from the 3D prints you may have uh, experienced so far. And it's very robust. Like you could use this as uh, as one of those uh, knives you sneak uh, into non permissive environments with. Uh, you know, it's pretty flexible. Uh, like if you if you made it a little thicker, it'd be better. But it's uh, in any case, it's a great approximation of the real thing. Uh, he actually printed out separate handle scales with that grenade grip. And put them on there. I want to show you some of the differences since last I showed you this prototype. This was the first one. Um, let's start from the blade. A uh, little bit, slightly bit more of a clip there, uh, but basically the same shape. Um, he added that sharpening choil, which uh, definitely is great for sharpening, obviously. Uh, for me, I just think it looks cool. I think it looks really cool, but I also am happy that it's there for sharpening. I don't plan on using that back edge uh, so much that it needs to be sharpened, but Give me that choil every time. Great jimping. Now you can see the grenade grip here. Same sharpening choil down here um, and plunge grind and all that. <clears throat> now back here, we added jimping. Uh, three jimps here, three jimps there. And uh, it's right there next to that glass breaker, which I was, first of all, you can see much better on the new prototype here. I was afraid that was going to be a hot spot because you know how much I like to put my thumb up there. That's the whole reason uh, this thumb area is there. And it's the whole reason the jimping is there because this is the primary way I want to be drawing it myself personally. It'd be, it's great in forward grip too, but this is my thing here. Uh, I like it like that. And I was worried that this point here, that pyramidal uh, glass breaker on the top, of the pommel there was going to get in the way but it doesn't at all it just melts in it's perfect like in that crook of your of your thumb so i'm very excited about this this is the agent 001 I, you know i love uh tkl knives and i you know i'm so thrilled that that uh, we could collaborate on this and and uh, he's a great guy he's great to collaborate with i love talking with him and um and you know working things out and uh but besides all that, I just can't wait to have it on my belt. I'll be carrying it quite a bit. Also, speaking of uh, knife junkie knife news, I just got, I'm not going to show them here, but uh, yesterday I got pictures of uh, the the work in progress of the prototype of the Nova 2, which uh, I guess it's no secret now. I let you know. Uh, it's a Warren Cliff or sort of reverse Tonto, I guess, um, but with a very, you know, um, uh, point driven uh geometry it's really really nice and he ground it perfectly and uh he said funny enough he said on paper i wasn't so psyched about this design um to be honest but once i ground it out um uh, he loves it so i don't know maybe sometimes you just need a little bit of contact with the thing and uh and interact with the thing to to appreciate it i'm i'm glad he likes it because of course that will that will imbue it with even more knife power all right, still to come, we're going to do Knife Life News. But before we do, I just want to, uh, well, I just want to say, if you like the show and you want to help support it, you can go to Patreon uh, and uh, see the different tiers of support you can sign up for. And at the top tier of support, you're a gentleman junkie. Uh, middle tier, you're a, uh, you're a tactical junkie. And the uh, 
and the three dollar tier you're a traditional junkie so all great knives traditional knives tactical knives gentleman knives uh those in the gentleman junkie category uh get put into a monthly uh knife drawing that we do right here on thursday night knives um but whether you're in that category, uh, tactical or traditional, I just want you to know that I really appreciate it. Um, you're going above and beyond, and and it's and Jim and I both appreciate it. So thank you very much. Quickest way to get there is to scan the QR code right here or go to thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon. I'll repeat that complicated address. It's thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon. Among this week's specials at Knives Ship Free, the Bark River Knives Petty Z in Thin CPM 154 is made for gliding through food prep. Find your favorite handle and order while it's still in stock. The Spyderco Native Chief Lightweight is now available in a combo edge blade. This lockback has a 4-inch BD1N blade and weighs in at 3.1 ounces, a full-size folder that you can carry all day. And RMJ's popular pry tool is back in stock in CPM 3V Tool Steel. It features a large finger ring for easy deployment and a molded kydex sheath with reversible clip attachment. Get these deals and other great specials from Knives Ship Free. Just use our affiliate link, thenifejunkie.com slash knivesshipfree. Support the show and get a great new knife at the same time. Thenifejunkie.com slash knivesshipfree. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. Okay, uh, before I get into knife life news, this is a, a message to the rare. Uh, well, I guess I guess the rare person is the one who watches the ads. But it, if you skip over the the knife ship free um, thing to get to the next uh, thing, the next segment here, uh, don't knife ship free every week. They have the coolest uh, artwork and specials of the, these amazing knives that come across the screen. And I always want to say, did you see that native chief with the combo blade? Because I'm into serrations right now. That looks so sweet. I want it. It's the lightweight. But I can never assume that ever anyone's watching that. So uh, if you're going to watch any of them, watch that first one because it's, uh, man, knives ship free. They just, they're awesome. And I haven't gotten anything from them in ages. So I got to change that up right now. Well, maybe not right now. Right now, let me get to this. Uh, the Svord peasant knife. You know, that's the Swedish version, basically, of the French Apennel. A lot of different cultures have have their peasant knife. You know, we kind of have the Sodbuster uh, or the Barlow, that's not necessarily a peasant's knife, but a working uh, knife. Uh, over in uh, uh, Europe, they have the Oppenel uh, from France. They have the cat knife from Germany. I can never remember the name of that one. Um, and then they have the Sword peasant knife. Uh, so anyway, this is the Sword peasant knife, a uh, one that I've always liked. Uh, it's a, um, a friction folder. And it's very inexpensive, and it comes in a variety of handles and a very rough sort of forged blade. Um, and uh, so let me just uh, preface this by saying they're a company out of New Zealand, which I also find kind of fascinating. I've always thought it's a fascinating country ever since Lord of the Rings. Uh, but the, oh, the company is helmed by master cutler Brian Baker. I just wanted to throw that in because I didn't know that until I did a little research on this. Uh, but this is a smaller version of the peasant knife, and it's featuring something uh, rare, this new steel called Dam Damax uh, steel. And Damax is made by, okay, Alima, which is the current name for Sandvik. So that Swedish blade company Sandvik, I guess, is going by Alima now. Uh, but they are making the first Damascus steel produced on an industrial scale. And it's stainless 7C27MO2 and 19C27. Those are the two blade steels. Uh, so that's about as nerdy as I get with steel. Uh, but uh, both mid-level uh, steels there, good corrosion resistant, decent ed edge retention, and easy to sharpen. Uh, that beautiful handle is Wengewood. Uh, it's an African hardwood and it's available now. So if you like friction folders and if you're a fan of this, I, I would imagine just like there are people out there who uh, collect and mod uh, open I, I would imagine that there are people out there who are into the sword peasant knife and they are all over this one. Uh, just a quick note. This is a smaller blade, uh, 2.5 inches. Uh, I think the, um, the regular one is closer to three inches. Uh, so yeah, that is out and available now. All right, next up, James Brand, uh, the Klein. Uh, that's their uh, first USA-made folder. Uh, gets a new carbon 
marbled carbon fiber handle. Here's the scandal. Uh, the carbon fiber is officially named molten carbon fiber and has kind of a different, uh, different look uh, than marbled carbin fiber so uh, uh that said uh, that that molten carbon fiber is made by a company called protec not that protec as uh as ben schwartz says uh not the not the makers of the automatic knife uh but th so this one is a 3.4 inch magna cut blade with super uh thin hollow grind which is exciting a, a great edc knife if you can uh, afford it and it's got their slide lock, which is like an axis lock. Uh, I've always called the James brand uh, knives um, kind of lifestyle knives, and I think they probably would not take exception to that. And uh, I have frequently, with uh, a uh, with a with a sporting attitude, uh, taken little uh, jabs at them. Oh, they're hipster, this and that. But from all account, uh, all accounts, they make great knives. And I had one James brand knife here on loan. Uh, and it was that little climbing knife, uh, and that was pretty cool, pretty well made. So um, I, I don't mean to dish on them unnecessarily. Uh, they've stuck around, so that means something too. Longevity uh, means something. If there were true hipsters who didn't care about knives, they would have moved on. But I think it's also cool that they're producing knives for people who, A, can afford them, and B, who probably, uh, many of them, maybe aren't knife people necessarily, but they they love well-made things and everything that they buy. And uh, you know what I'm saying? So if I'm going to get a modern pocket knife, it's going to be something stylish and very, very well-made. And, you know, could be this this uh, molten carbon. I'm sorry. This, uh, if, you, if you're looking for the molten carbon fiber, you're going to be uh, missing out. So uh, look for the, um, what did, what were they calling it? Uh, not molten, uh, marbled. That's what they were calling it. All right, I've said enough about that. Cool knife, cool knife. They have a couple cool knives over there. Uh, many cool knives at James Brand, actually. All right, next up is We Knives. They have a new collaboration with Torby Knives. Uh, they've done two with uh, Torby in the past, uh, big uh, fixed blades. Uh, and... This one is the yard bird. Uh, it's cool. It looks actually kind of bird-like. It's uh, taking a um, Warncliffe handle, I mean, a Warncliffe blade with that, uh, I want to say, upswept edge that makes it more like a Kiridashi than a Warncliffe uh, in, in the presentation of the point and the edge. And it puts it on a very modern titanium and G10 uh, karambit handle with a spine-mounted clip. I do not like the spine mounted clips. Uh, I just don't like how they feel in pocket. They kind of twist your pocket a little, uh, but that's just me. I know it's a, it's a, um, uh, an innovation that is uh, well appreciated uh, in certain, certain corners of the knife world. So I, I'm not dissing it. It's just not my, my thing, but the handle looks very comfortable. I do like the jimping all the way around the ring because if you're uh, gripping tight, uh, and or if you have it in reverse grip and you don't have your finger through the the ring, it's good for for the thumb. Um, or if you have your finger in the ring and you're flipping around doing your karambit tricks, it's great for arresting motion. Just clamp your thumb down on that jimping and it stops. Um, I think it's a beautiful looking knife. I think it's pretty cool. Uh, maybe too many notes for me personally. Uh, these are not the kind of knives I I necessarily carry. I appreciate them though, especially the. The more tactical, the better. Um, so uh, the blade steel on this 20 CV and the button lock is on the left hand side. It's it's as if this were a lefty setup blade. So, um, yep, there's a button lock if you flip that knife over. So kind of odd that they would put it on that side. But um, hey, I guess uh, lefty lefty rights too, you know. Last up, giant mouse, the Iona. So the Iona V2 is coming out in a limited edition. Actually, it's already out in a limited edition. And it's two uh, two different kinds. One of them is an aluminum handle, uh, anodized bronze with magna cut steel. And the other is a titanium handle um, uh, with uh, S90V. They made 400 of the aluminum with magna cut and 300 of the tie with S90V. And they're calling that second titanium version instead of the Iona, the Tiona. Love it. Uh, if you don't know Giant Mouse, uh, you've been living under a rock, but it's a company uh, formed between the two very uh, 
famous and uh, well-loved Danish knife designers, Jens Anzo and Jesper Voxnes. Um, so the two powerhouse designers, and they always make beautiful knives together. They, they do make beautiful music together, as the old line used to be. Um, I, I just think they're everyone that they make, every knife that they put out together is recognizable. And it seems like separately, every knife that they themselves make on their own and, and design are recognizable as theirs. Uh, they're, they're two very talented and very, uh, what do you want to say? Two, two designers that have very strong styles. And together, I think it's really good. Luckily, uh, everything they do is pretty much below my my uh, size range. And, and so um, I can kind of dismiss them from my must collect category. Um, so there you go. It, these are available now. I do suggest you jump on it because I think there are some super, super fans of Giant Mouse. And if you're looking to get into an Iona V2 and you want one of these special versions, you better jump in there because you do know that uh, the collectors will be all over it. All right. That is it for Knife Life News this week. Um, uh, be sure to check out uh, all the other shows we have here. You can subscribe. All the other shows, meaning Thursday Night Knives and the Sunday um, interview show. I, for instance, just got to talk to, and you'll hear this interview next week, but just got to talk to someone uh, that whose videos I've been watching for years, 12 years. And um, it was really good to meet him and talk with him. And I felt like I knew so much about him or, or yeah, felt like I knew him already. Uh, it was, it was just a great conversation. So tune into the other shows we have here and uh, also check out uh, us on Facebook, check us out on Instagram, but, but especially go to the knife junkie.com, the website, uh, Jim just knocks it out of the park over there and it has everything you want right there. All right. Let's, uh, let's come up on state of the collection right after these here messages. The Shockwave Tactical Torch is your ultimate self-defense companion, featuring a powerful LED bulb that lasts 100,000 hours, a super-sharp crenulated bezel, and built-in stun gun delivering 4.5 million volts. Don't settle for ordinary. Choose the Shockwave Tactical Torch. TheKnifeJunkie.com slash Shockwave. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. The one new knife I got this week was the Bird Cara Cara Serrated. I'm going to put this under the knife cam. I am really excited about this knife and uh, not necessarily the kind of knife you'd expect me to be really excited about. Uh, it's like a cheap Spyderco, right? And and it's about the size of an Endura. And Bob, you rarely ever carry your Endura unless you're painting the house. Like, why are you so excited about this? Well, uh, first of all, it inspired today's uh topic of conversation because it's so smooth and yeah it's on washers and this is something uh i we've been talking a bit about on thursday night knives it's been coming up i just i love washer knives that's just my um uh, that's that's where i started out you know a lot of new collectors um or 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 collectors who are performance driven um uh, really have gone whole hog into the bearings as have all the makers like uh, looking at my uh, collection now um, it's definitely bearings heavy um, and, but i still love this hydraulic slow roll feel of washers so that was one thing the other thing the real reason i got this uh, that that was the bonus once i got it and like man this is smooth i didn't know what to expect you know an inexpensive spider co well i should have known uh, that it would be great um, but Scott Babb of Libre Knife Fighting, uh, a guy that I've been talking with to get him on the show. I can't wait to have him on the show to talk to him. But he's the guy who developed Libre Knife Fighting, which is uh, really, it's like pick haul knife fighting. So the ed tip down, edge in, um, hammer fist style of fighting. And this is the folder he uses because you can just wave it out of the pocket with the, with the Emerson Wave, which is... Uh, Pat, it's a patent or they have let's see how do they do this they've licensed it from or spiderco has licensed the wave from emerson and i think you see that like my wife i got my wife a uh, a waved delica and it has the patent number and says emerson on it 
Uh, this one does not. I'm, I'm wondering if it just falls under the umbrella of Spyderco's license, and so they didn't bother putting it on here. Uh, but in any case, it, it's really handy, as are all waves. And uh, I have the clip mounted at, for left-hand carry. Uh, I don't carry this on the left-hand side. I carry this in my right back pocket or sometimes in my right front pocket, but I'm, I'm a little squeamish about that, and I'll tell you why in a second. Uh, but what you do is you draw it, and boom, it opens up as, as it will with a wave, and then you just roll it in your hand, and you have it in tip-down, edge-in uh, position. Uh, it's very easy. I'm going to do it with my right hand here. It's very easy. As you draw, it comes out like this, and you just roll it. And you're, you're going to be doing that anyway. Uh, and if you were trying to have the edge out, you would have to readjust. Uh, so in this case, it's just very natural, intuitive, and it brings you right into that into that fighting grip. I opted for the serrations. I love serrations right now. I'm just into them. Um, I want to do a demo a video with serrations, but that I would have to dull the rest of the blade <laughs> uh, to do what I'm thinking of. But I guess that's I can do that with this because this is 8CR13 MOV, which is very easy to resharpen. Um, and so, yeah, I'm I'm very very happy, very impressed with this. Uh, it was like 45 bucks, I believe. It's got a little landing pad for the clip so that you don't mash up and tear up your pants because uh, the texturizing here is it's uni it's uh multi dual directional mul yeah <laughs> so when you when you uh pull back this way you feel you feel the grip if you push forward this way you feel the grip so nice it's kind of like the uh, bi-directional texture texturing of the of the delica or but it's a little different all right enough said about this i really really dig it and uh if you're on the fence and you were thinking about trying out a, a bird knife, but you're like, oh, you know, it's not a spider co. That is true. It's not a spider co. Uh, as a matter of fact, you can feel that in certain finishing areas like like this. The edge of the lock here is sharp. They just needed to knock that down a little bit. But that's part of why this is inexpensive. Uh, and just in use and carry, it bothers me less. But I still want to take like uh, my diamond stone and just a few times just on the on the corners. Um, you feel a little bit of that. I used to feel a little bit of that on this FRN, but it seems like going in and out of the pocket and handling it has either, you know, kind of pushed it down and kind of formed it together or abraded it away. Uh, very impressed with this knife. Um, very good price. And if you're on the fence, I say get off the fence and go for it. Check it out. If you don't like it, you can drop it in the car door pocket and it'll be there in a pinch. And you'll be happy about that. Uh, okay, I want to remind you about the t-shirts we have and show you this week's t-shirt. This is Life's Tough. Get a sharper knife, dude. Uh, this is a design by Jim. Uh, Jim has multiple, I mean, when I say multiple, I mean like over 50 uh, at this point, t-shirt designs in our shop, our swag shop. Uh, Theknifejunkie.com slash shop is where you go. And uh, actually, you can scroll through the pages and see all this awesome uh, knife content t-shirtage that uh, Jim is designing. So be sure to go to the featured t-shirt of the week at Theknifejunkie.com slash shop. All righty. Let's, uh, let's talk about this for a second. Here in the modern era, it's almost like this is what people expect out of their knives out of their folders and if you're only listening you can tell what that is i'm pulling the the lock back on the uh on the snex designed fusion fg and just to illustrate how easy it is to flip and close and flip and close and fidget and flip and close um this this could be the modern day version, the knife junkies version of grinding your teeth. You know, it's like uh, the weight of the world is on my shoulders. Uh, I, I, information overload. And uh, I just have to get some energy out somehow. And this is just so gratifying, physically gratifying. But you know what else is gratifying? And I'm going to show you uh, with a couple of also rands that are not going to be in this list. Here, here are three examples of very smooth washer knives first one this is the civivi pecaro uh, 
This is one of the few Civivis you'll find on washers, and it's so gratifying to open and close. It's super smooth. There's no part of it that stutters. It's not like, like the action is glass the whole way. Um, this one, this is a Real Steel H6 Blue Sheep, and it's got nearly fall shut action, but that same ultra smooth flicking and closing all on washers. Phosph phosphor bronze, but they don't have to be, as you'll see from this list. There are Nylatron washers and and all. I think that's no. These are brass or uh, these are phosphor bronze. This is the old um, M1. This is the first. Uh, this is the second run of the Combative Edge M1. That flipper is is near merely a guard or something to start the action. This is not a flipper. This is definitely a thumb stud knife. But on washers, it is so smooth. So why do we have to? have the knife fall shut are we that lazy i i mean i know we are that lazy but is it about that no it's not about that it's about how it feels um so i'm here to say that if smooth is your thing and not necessarily free moving if smooth is your thing reconsider washer knives i, I want to start bringing them back a little bit more i'm i'm getting a little tired of the bearings all the time the bearings first up on this list is the cold steel ad10 Phosphor bronze washers in there, drop shut, really. I mean, this is a fidgety triad lock knife. Uh, knife. And I got to say, many of them are. And by that, I mean, not only fidgety on the clothes, because you can always, uh, on all of these cold steel knives, put your finger forward in the choil and drop it. And uh, the ricasa will land on your finger, not the sharpened blade. And then you and close it from there. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the actual opening. I'm going to use my right hand here because my left hand, look, you can just flick that open without wrist. So if it's the fidget you're looking for, you can get the fidget in this. You say, but aren't bearings like um, higher technology? Isn't that like an advancement? Isn't that innovation and an advancement? Well, I don't think... In all innovations are necessarily advancements, uh, not on certain knives. For, I'll give you a for instance, the the Demco AD20. I love that knife. You know I love that knife. It is a hard-use knife all day long. But sometimes I wonder, what if sand and grit and gunk get in, the, in those bearings? Um, it, it'll probably still open, but it'll grind open. Um, and, and then... Uh, but but with washers, there's no way for that grit to get in there. I mean, you'll still feel grit outside of the washers between the handle material or the or the liner material and the blade, but not where the washers are. Whereas uh, you can get sand and grit in between the bearings where the bearings are. And uh, I guess that's what I'm getting at uh, with this. That's not going to happen. Super smooth. And then, of course, Cold steel, super sturdy and durable. Uh, great heat treats on cold steel knives. You know, there's uh, fingerprints on a lot of these. And, you know, I don't have my cleaning cloth around me. So I'm not going to obsess. I'm going to live live on the edge here. Uh, this is one of the, this was from the first run of these. So that blade is hollow ground, which is awesome. Uh, and it's also S35VN, right? Yeah, S35VN. Uh, this is one that has gotten a lot of use uh, over the past few years. Uh, next up, now, it, really, it's anything from this company. As as is, it's pretty much anything from Cold Steel. I don't think they have any washer knives, unless there's something brand new, uh, unless the unless the the um, Mayhem has it. I'm not sure. Uh, everything from Spiderco, almost everything from Spiderco is on washers, and almost everything from Spiderco is just ridiculously smooth and fidgety. Uh, this, of course, has the awesome compression lock, and that compression lock really is quite strong because it's a uh a spring um leaf i'm sorry it's a, a leaf spring that pops into the path of the tang and has a tab that lands in a perfectly milled notch and so you would basically have to shear the metal uh off of the um off of the lock spring 
to to get this thing to to close on you. So what's more likely to happen is the handle's going to break or the blade's going to break before the lock fails. So very strong lock, but also just extremely fidgety in the right hand. I I do not find it very fidgety in the left hand. As a matter of fact, when I do it in the left hand, I feel like it just might fall out of my hands. Uh, but with the right hand, all day long. And that's on washers, people. That just fell shut here. Let me go over here and just look at this. Free hanging, free falling. No bearings. No bearings. Uh, so Spyderco, Yojimbo, Yojumbo are my favorites. Uh, but look at anything else look at look at the um look at the military the paramilitary the sage series none of those have bearings and they all get super smooth but i think the the, the concern is this there are so many companies there are so many knives and people trying to grab attention that no one is willing to put in the time to break in a knife and I, and yeah i know you shouldn't have to break in a knife but i mean you know knives get nicer as you use them and that's called break in uh and with washers it's worth the wait, but I think that people go through so many knives, especially people like me, that companies want to offer immediate, like, uh, immediate break in. And uh, yeah, uh, I guess that's to be expected. And I guess I shouldn't be complaining, but this is me starting to sound like an old man, isn't it? You kids can't wait for your knives to break in. Next is the QSP Penguin. Um, I'm loving this knife. I mean, I've loved this knife for a long time, but I just uh, was going through my, uh, for lack of a better term, awesome Chinese folders that I have no um, no heartfelt connection to, uh, to sell uh, to a neighbor um, and to you all when I when I post them. But this one, I was like, eh, I'm going to keep this one. It is, first of all, it's just stupidly smooth. Um on these washers and it didn't start that way but it got that way after uh like a day of use uh this has come out of the collection and it's on the desk pretty permanently uh where i keep a bunch of knives over here and uh this is one that just gets used now just random use and i'm glad i pulled it out because this is not one that i consider collectible in that it's not it doesn't have a lot of the qualities that i find precious uh, other than it's just a really, really good um, uh, utility pocket knife. So QSP, QSP, baby. They got a lot of really cool knives and they do a really great job <clears throat> with their uh, slip joint knives. And if that's if if there's any connection between the ability to make a really great slip joint knife and the ability to make a really good uh, washer knife, uh, it would be through them. All right, next up is the Benchmade, yes, Benchmade, Bug Out. And I say yes, Benchmade, because I don't have very many. You don't hear me talk about them too many, uh, too much. But this sucker is amazing. My Bug Out is so smooth. Um, it may as well have washers, this one. Uh, here, I'm going to come to the main cam so I can show it drop in uh, dramatic fashion. See that? It falls and it swings. I mean, so loose, but there's no play. It's totally tight. Oh, wait. Eh, maybe there's the just the slightest bit of acceptable use, but it almost feels more like uh, I'm forcing it. Uh, but you get this, that swinging action. No bearings, but you get the, the stoutness of the uh, washers in this very, very thin package. Now, what do you think? Do you feel more confident when you have a washer knife in hand and you're doing something critical or maybe harder than usual? Uh, or do you feel better with washer uh, with bearings? I used to think that bearings automatically centered a knife, and they kind of do in a way. Uh, and that was a big draw, but i'm I'm starting to feel like the sturdiness, the durability might just be in the washers what do you think am i being an old fart about this let me know next one is the emerson in this case the sax the emerson sax but uh i could have pulled out any one of my emersons uh they are finicky bastards i will tell you they they but they they bloom into like the most the most wonderful knives uh but they do go through a break-in sort of period um at least the older ones did uh, i just recently got the 
the Tim Kennedy folder. And uh, my buddy had it for a while and maybe he broke it in, but uh, it came super smooth to me. And now that they're doing the single detent, I mean, they've been doing that now for eight years, so I shouldn't say now. Uh, but this with the single detent, it really adds to how it flies open. Not very good with my thumb, let me see, and my right hand side. But very, very smooth. Again, uh, these are uh, bronze washers, phosphor bronze washers, and very, very smooth. And wait, wait, let me see here. Yeah, sometimes you can look down in and see the, the color. I don't think you can with that light. But um, So all the Emerson knives have that sturdy feel to them. Um, back, No back and forth wiggle uh, unless you unless you don't tighten it down properly uh, I, and tighten it down with a, with your Swiss army knife or any other uh, random thing that fits there. That's what I always loved about their pivot um, really built for the field. So super sturdy um, and no frills are the Emerson knives. Um, but, and, and it's no surprise that they're on washers. I know they have the sheepdog. I know that their flippers are on washers, but I got to tell you, I've had those on loan. And I find them, I don't know, suspicious. At least the one I had, it was it was nice, but I didn't like it. I didn't like the feel that uh, on an Emerson. I didn't like that. I don't know. Not an Emerson flipper guy. And bearings, for me, definitely not. All right, speaking of Emerson, this is an Emerson design from Zero Tolerance. And a bunch of Zero Tolerances that I have are on washers they kind of split it at least in my collection uh the only one on bearings is my 0452 now i know they have a lot of bearings knives but uh, i love this one so this one feels here you can there is an ungimped extension to the tang there that you can easily use as a front flipper you can even do it with my uh roll over with my front finger so it is incredibly smooth. It's got a great detent too. It's it's dialed in perfectly uh, for flicking and stuff like that. Uh, but also, it doesn't shake out, which I like. Uh, there are certain knives I like to I like that I can shake out, but those are bigger bladed knives, where um, you know, like the big cold steels, where you're letting the blade weight uh, come out so you can deploy it quickly and look gnarly i like that on some knives but definitely not on my edc not not a big fan of that and so this has a great detent but just a super smooth action on those washers and i think the the knife would have a different character with washers i feel like knives do have a different character with washers they're just a little precious and hey i like precious things i'm not saying that in a necessarily a bad way but it's sort of like Ah, you know what I mean. Uh, next up in this list is the Kara Kara. I will be brief with this one because I was just waxing poetic about it. But uh, again, this is the one that inspired this conversation, this one-way conversation. And uh, yeah, I'm a big fan of this. I, I look forward to, uh, this has been uh, not only a back pocket, but a drop in the coat pocket. We've had a cold snap here. I've been wearing my winter coat again. And I always have a pocket, uh, a knife in the right hand pocket. And this one is cool to drop in like this here, um, drop in like this. So I'm walking this way. And so it's riding uh, with the spine up or with the, uh, the lock up and the point forward. So when I pull it out of my coat pocket, I can snag it on the pocket and open it. Yeah, I know. I know. It doesn't come up when I go to Wegmans, uh, which, <laughs> which is, uh, you know. The place I, I end up going the most uh, during the week. I love that place. Uh, all right, next up. The Mekong Delta Combat Folder from Resco Instruments uh, and Gooseworks. Or, yeah, Gooseworks. But who made this knife? This is Best Tech. Best Tech. They have made what seems to be a classic American style. Uh, frame lock folder i say american style like in the tradition of the spartan harzy folder the sabenza the strider the um you know some of those knives it just has that super glassy feel and the incredibly stout build 
Uh, but so like, I like, I'm very fond of telling this story. You've heard it uh, several times at this point, but I thought that this was an American made knife and I was all thrilled with its, uh, because I love the knife itself. And it was really exciting to have felt like I was on the vanguard of, of, of a new American knife company after watching NAF Sergeant's video about this and then jumping on it. Um, and then it turns out it's produced by best tech, um, which is great too, because I love best tech. It kind of, it kind of yanked some of the, some of the, some of the, um, mythology I was building around this knife, like a pearl, but it, it's still, I still love the knife. Um, <clears throat> so it just goes to show that best tech, a company that is known for its super high performance, uh, modern flippers and folders, uh, can really do an old school style frame lock folder with washers super super well this thing i swear to god it feels i shouldn't swear to god it's lent i i swear uh on my knife collection this thing feels like uh like a sabenza like a spartan harzy folder like a strider just super super smooth and not falling shut but you're always in control of the opening and closing I love it. Resco Instruments. I really like this thing. I went um, on their website recently to see if they had the micarta version with the hollow grind, uh, and it was gone. And I hope they make more because I I I want that version of this knife um, even more than this version. Okay. Uh, next up is Three Rivers Manufacturing Atom. Now this one, uh, like the Neutron, is uh, comes and goes. It's not that it comes and goes. Uh, but it's hard to get your hands on because they don't make huge batches of them and you can't necessarily predict when they're going to be coming out. Um, you just got to kind of get get on the newsletter, get on the um, Instagram and just kind of follow them and see when they're when they're dropping stuff. Um, a very, very good EDC knife. It's super simple, thin, very, very thin and light, but you've got a three point six inch blade. So. Uh, in my wheelhouse, very capable. I like that the point, it's a drop point, but the point is low and it doesn't have a huge belly. It has a, a, a very nice length of uh, straight and then it has a slight belly up to that tip. The tip is nice and low, very good for utility, very good ergonomics and simple. One of the unique selling propositions of this knife and the Neutron and many other, numerous other, maybe all other uh, Three River Manufacturing Knives, which are made up in Massachusetts, by the way, is the fact that you can swap out handles and handles, I'm sorry, you can swap out handle scales uh, without taking apart the knife. All you have to do is remove these two screws and it lifts off. You don't have to remove the pivot or the body screws. Um, so it makes, it makes A, swapping um, scales easy and gives you uh, options. You can, I have a whole bunch of scales for this. I have like five different pair and I can swap them out as I, as I desire and feels like I have a new knife, but also it's a great way for a company to sell scales, um, come up with a way to make it easy and fast to swap scales. I think NAFS does this now. Um, and you can just, sell tons of scales because <laughs> who doesn't want a whole bunch of if you like the knife if you're a fan of the trm atom it's you can present and you're a knife junkie you're gonna want more of them oh i need one with a black blade i need one with a this and a that um but this way you don't really have to do that you can just uh buy scales and for a company that doesn't put out millions of knives uh, that's good for them too it kind of reduces a little bit of pressure um, this is a great knife. Just having it in hand and opening it and looking at it, uh, I need to carry this more. Uh, I don't carry this enough. I, I did for a while, and uh, it's been a while. This will be a great summer knife. I'm going to have to bring this out in the summer again because of its thinness and its lightness. Also very capable. That's a 20 CV uh, blade, very thin uh, and really, really beautifully honed and sharpened. Sharpened and honed. Next up. This and its big brother, this is the Ontario Rat Model 2. Super uh, smooth. I, I, this is one, I call this Pinky Tuscadero. My daughter, I got this for me through my wife when I was, when she was little. And 
I had the Model 1, the Rat 1, but didn't really appreciate the line until I got the Model 2 because this one, pretty much from day one, was super easy to flick open. This is one of the first knives uh, where I started just flicking them with my thumb. It was always either slow roll with a knife or flipping with a knife. Um, this is a knife I started flicking on, and then and then my tenacious, I started uh, finger flicking, you know, uh, middle finger flicking. So this is a this was a bit of a landmark knife for me for a lot of reasons, but one of them is just how very very smooth this is, and we all know how durable the rat folders are. Uh, it's this smooth with zero play. And to me, that is the sign of something that's really, really well engineered, of a knife that's really well engineered. It's got no play, tight tolerances, and super smoothness. And, and the design has grown on me. I remember, well, probably 12 years back or so uh, with this knife, I was like, man, it's just ugly. Like the way it steps up and, and the sort of generic drop point blade, the way this you know thumb ramp steps up and... And the spine is above the level of the of the back of the handle. I don't know something about this proportions bothered me, uh, but you know it. Over time, I've grown to love it. Uh, you have a place to choke up here that's not a choil, which I I also like. I would prefer a hand guard like this that you can come up onto than a choil that takes up space, cutting edge space. So the Rat Two, the Rat One, good to go, smooth on washers uh penultimate knife here is the spartan harzy folder this one is just again a very very smooth washer knife here here let me let me bring it over to the main cam and i'll show you first of all it flies open easily and then look at that the way it closes it's so gratifying uh, and then even when you do that and you feel it and you feel just a slightest bit of resistance, but glassy resistance as it hammers itself home, home with the weight of that blade. This knife is incredibly durable. This is one of those knives that you could roll over with, um, you know, a tractor and it's, it's going to be fine. Two very thick slabs of titanium with no weight reduction in the middle or on the insides of them with very stout standoffs look at those standoffs they're a quarter inch across at least um just super durable and then you've got three of them at the back and then a big big chunky pivot up front so um but all of that rough and tough and tank likeness belies its silky smoothness its luxurious feel and that's what it is. That's what I like about it. It's a luxurious, smooth feel. It's not out of control, tweaking and dropping and drop shutting and threatening to cut your foot. It's smooth. You know, it's not going to go crazy. It's not going to call your parents. And All right. Uh, and the very last one is the Sabenza 21. Got to use my right hand for this because there's no left-handed option. Um, but the Sabenza 21, of course, you knew that that was going to be on this list um defines what i'm talking about here um of all of these it is i don't know maybe i can't say it's the smoothest because i think i just want to say it's the smoothest but it it really feels like it <laughs> you know that it's just having that spartan harzy in my hand maybe that's smoother um but there's nothing like the feel of a sabenza i mean it defines here i'm see if i can middle finger flick this with my left hand not a chance okay but it defines that it defines that feel and it's something that i'm not even tempted to flick open i mean you can well for me I, yeah you can uh, but it's not even a temptation to me because i want to feel it the whole way opening it and closing it and i guess what ultimately what it gives me is surety in hand that i can't tell you how many times and and i've found this to be a virtue but sometimes not like how many times I've closed a knife and opened a knife and then been like, is this tight? And that goes to show you how smooth it is because it is tight. But at the same time, it's like, um, it doesn't necessarily make you feel, doesn't make me feel as confident with it 
necessarily if I'm constantly uh, testing it. And maybe that's just a personal hurdle. I have to get over. But hopefully you'll be here to help me get over that hurdle uh, as you were here to watch me badmouth bearings, which I don't mean to do. I do love bearings. Uh, I just love washers more. All right. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Uh, be sure to join us on uh, tomorrow night for Thursday Night Knives, uh, as always. And then uh, the weekend following that, I will, will not be doing Thursday Night Knives. Uh, but I'll tell you about that as it comes up. I say the weekend after that because, to me, Thursday Night Knives is the start of the weekend. Uh, also, be sure to join us on Sunday for Carter of Edged Mindset. He's uh, who I was talking about before. Uh, I love that guy's channel. I've been with him ever since he was Juju 1313, way back when. And uh, his take on knives has 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 gotten even better. So uh, be sure to join us for that interview. For Jim, working his magic behind the switcher, I'd like to say thanks for watching. I'm Bob DeMarco, and uh, I'm begging you, I'm beseeching you, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at the knifejunkie.com or call our 24 7 listener line at 724 466 4487 and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the knife junkie podcast